Hola. We are live, everybody. How you doing? It's uh, four o'clock. It's what is it? It's live. It's Thursday. Here we are. We're hanging out, man. Um, this is the new Fly River Turtle Pond in front of the house. I've got Sophia hanging out. I got Leo's hanging out, being loud, jumping around, and Kate's here, and actually Tom is here also. Yeah. There's Tom. His flight's been delayed five times already today, <laughs> but that's good for me because now I don't have to uh, do anything as far as hold the camera. So uh, yeah, man, we're gonna do this live. I figured it'd be fun to put this guy in his new ha habitat. And it looks like Leo and Sophia got a new habitat too because they've been in and out of this pond already. So this is the pond the guys at Aquascapes uh, went ahead and built for me. It's still just clearing up right now, but I figured this would be a fun uh, event for everybody to do live and we can answer some questions. Yeah, this is for everyone's first time seeing this. Oh, really? No one, well, well, no one's don't seen worry, this guys, yet. Because coming up on Tuesday, Tom's going to get home tonight and get right to work and make Tuesday's episode. And we're going to be able building to do, this, yeah. We're going to be able to go ahead and do uh, the build. So you guys will see how they did this on Monday of last week. So I'm pretty stoked. Well, what do you say we put him in and we spend the rest of the time watching him and, uh, you know. Be cool. This is a big deal, man. This guy's about to get a sweet, oh, sweet home. Super dope like home. Little. So let's look at him, get all up close. Here he is. This is the guy that's been living with Slinky. And you can really see they're fully aquatic. I'm not going to have to worry about any kind of containment yet, but there will be containment in this pond. Watch your back. There will be containment in this pond. And, um, you know, this guy's not going to yeah. crawl out of the water because he's a, uh, he is a male. The males don't come out of the water, so he's just going to be hanging out. So I'm excited. Uh, let's see. Hopefully he's, you know, warmed up from the day here. And we're going to go ahead and put him in. So the first thing you notice is a lot of movement in this pond. And they did that because they knew a fly river was going in here. So there's tons of movement uh, in this pond, a lot of water current. So it's going to be very cool for him. So I'm going to put him in the shallow end. And hopefully that he's able to go ahead and crawl through the little tunnel. There he is. Oh, come on, buddy. There we go. Oh, my gosh. And, guys, you know, it's going to clear up a bit more. He's going right into... Right under the bridge. Right under the bridge. No problem. Where's he going? Come on, buddy. Where is are he you? coming or what? Oh, man, there he is. is. Yoo-hoo. Awesome. He's, and it's got such nice current, it's actually pushing him. So look at that. And there he's going to disappear into the depths of the pond. That is oh, cool. Oh, man, that's so awesome, dude. So he's going to live in here. This pond gets to be about, uh, I'd say, two and a half to three feet deep. Um, just beautiful design uh, from the guys at Aquascapes. And, you know, I'm going to have to, of course, um, you know, I've been loaded doing a lot of videos this week with Tom. So I haven't had time to really tweak this the way I want it. So I am going to do some more landscaping here. And we're actually going to add a river that flows into the pond in a few months. So um, I'm really excited to do that. And this is it, man. This pond is unbelievable. I can't believe it was done. Someone asked, are you heating it? Uh, what I'm gonna do is the same thing I've always done with uh, all my ponds, uh, is I'm gonna run the hose water in it on cold nights. The water comes out of the well at 72 degrees. And we built this this morning, you can see, if you guys look, I dug a drain. There, you know, these guys came in here and they built the pond and they had to go in one day. So again, like I said, I've been tweaking it. Don't step off the back. Tom. Thank you. <laughs> Tom almost walked off the back of the bridge. But um, but basically what I did was we made a low spot here and I took um, uh, tubing, uh, thick tubing for gutters. And when the water level gets too high, come over here. I Hopefully you'll be able to see this. I don't want the phone to cut out. But we dug a trench with the tubing put some rocks here and you can see now it's going to drain out uh, as I need it to drain. Okay. So I'll be able to run water through it. And when it rains, it's going to be able to um, overflow and flow away from the house. I have to also put some tubing in by the foundation of the house because we've got some low spots there. Come on over here. I'm worried about the uh, wireless not making it. But anyway, we're going to have to do some, um, you know, a couple of minor tweaks with perforated tubing. So the water coming off the roof, when you hit this this waterfall, some water will flow back towards my foundation. But the perforated tubing is inexpensive, sandy soil. I'm going to dig a trench and run it off into that side and run one off into this side. And uh, man, this is just incredible. We're going to do more river rock. 
But the real cool thing is we're going to get, I think it'll be a decent waterfall. So as I was saying, it's going to be a real cool set. Um, I'm excited about it. I mean, I can't leave it, you know, I couldn't invent it by this itself. So. Jose Mateo, so what about raccoons? Would they be a issue? Raccoon issue, uh, not with that particular turtle. And the other thing is the way this one is designed, main area where these guys live, um, and what my buddy Luke does uh, with his work features is you make steep sides so that when they come in, they can't really uh, get a good reach on the animal. Uh, so this one I'm not worried about because they have no issue with raccoons because I got wire uh, around the entire two and a half acres. So I'm not really worried about that. Um, but, uh, you know, we got little faces, we put some, uh... Are there fish? They keep yeah, them Yeah, we put some little, um, we put little mosquito fish, the guppies, and we're gonna get some cichlids, and put them in there, really beautiful colored cichlids, because Sophia, she wants fish, right? Yeah, she loves fish, and she was a good help to them, man. She was helping me bait. And koi put with those things? Uh, koi could be, um, but you know what? This is a, it's just kind of small pond, so I don't want to overload it. Um, that's why I'm gonna actually add the extra stream, because I just want to make sure that we have enough filtration uh, so I can put a couple more turtles in here. Turtles, as you know, are really dirty. They, they defecate a lot. So I want to make sure that we are really uh, handling the bio load in this thing. Will he stay by himself? Uh, if I get a female, he'll have a female in here. So I got to find a female. There he is, female fly river. There he is, he just took a breath. And this is great. There's one of the ledges that was designed for him. And yeah, he went right up. under the log. He went right under the log. That's so cool. That's why this was designed like this, so he'd have an overhang to just relax and be safe and quiet. And these guys are actually pretty uh, nocturnal as well. So I am gonna come out here at night. You could just hang out. And guys, listen to the sound of the, the waterfall. I mean, it's pretty peaceful. Kate likes that. I already found some Adirondack. You did? You found Adirondack chairs? Kate's pretty excited, guys. I'm excited to kind of sit out like two old people on my porch and just kind of hang out. Hey, Joe Bob, how you doing? Just hanging out by the pond. It's going to be good, right, guys? Leo is dying to go in the pond. Yes, he is. He is. He's a little, he's ready to go swimming. <laughs> so uh, lots of great things happening uh, with water features. Again, I can't thank Greg Whitstock, Ed Blue, Chris, and Ryan from Aquascapes and the whole crew that came out here. They really did a beautiful job, uh, a job that... Gosh, I mean, it's so amazing to see. So you guys are going to see what they did coming up on Tuesday. It's going to be incredible. we got a nice time lapse for you. The it was an insane 10-hour thing. It was insane. It was nuts, man. It was nuts. Uh, but I, you know, I, I, Kyle uh, really was generous and gave me all the rock from some construction that he had going on. So this big bridge look at this bridge man this is so sick man this is what you dream of right guys like all us animal lovers and turtle lovers all you want is a pond i mean it's the ultimate aquarium so check this out look at this bridge i mean how cool is that right it's just a big piece of slate rock that kyle had lying around and he was just super generous and let me uh take it and we've got this really unique you know it's kind of like an hourglass design and the reason they designed it that way is it's got a lot of current. When you take a water and funnel it with current, it creates like a really powerful stream-like effect. So what happens is that water is going to flow. And when this turtle really starts to investigate a surrounding, there's little pockets. We designed little pockets he can hide in. Visual barriers if I get another Fly River turtle in here. Uh, that turtle will get a bit bigger. Uh, but as you know, Camp Kennan, is always evolving and this is going to be just the first of many water features to come it's always been my dream and i've watched how these guys built it so you're going to see camp Kennan and myself get way more into water features and certainly in the months to come we got a lot of surprises coming up and we're going to be able to teach you guys how to do this as well so you should definitely go to aquascapes.com check out what they offer they sell kits in fact this is a kit so you can purchase the liner, the waterfall, the skimmer, and pumps and lights in this kit. And basically you can, you know, use your imagination, create the shape you want for the animal you want or the design you want. So it's really unique. It's really, um, they've made it very easy. And so I'm excited for them and excited to share with you this pond and how they did it. But how about some more questions, man? Some people were asking stuff about, someone said don't put the chicklets in with guppies, they'll eat them. Oh, really? Okay, yeah, this you know is, that's guys, true or not, but... be learning. Uh, you know what, guys, here's the deal. The guppy, the, gu the cichlids will eat the guppies. 
But what we have here, uh, we're trying to create an ecosystem. Well, someone, can you put other turtles in with the Fly River? Uh, you can, but I have to watch them because sometimes the Fly Rivers can be aggressive. But we had the pink belly side necks in with this particular turtle with no issues. So I'm not worried about that. But here's what I'm going to do, and I think you guys will dig this. So if you notice, look around. We've got so much land area here, right? We got this stream. Oh, I'm putting, I am going to put in my Chinese box turtles are going to live in this area. So all 25 Chinese box turtles are going to live in here. What I'm going to do is create a really nice fence, low fence. Maybe add, I'm going to do like, um, it's going to get sunken around. Maybe I'll use some wire and then decorate it with bamboo to so make a little bamboo fence that comes all the way around a gate here. But now the Chinese box turtles are going to have access to the pond. They're going to have access to the stream. There's a cool, check this out guys. There's like a natural cave right here. And we've got like this philodendron, this cocos vine is going to start growing, but we've got caves. All this needs to be utilized, right? You can't just have one species, right? You know how I like to do it. So this is all going to be Chinese box turtle habitat. How sick is that? They do perfect here in Florida. Someone said chicklets will eat guppies and they produce a lot of waste. Oh, okay. So that's good to know. That's good to know. Thanks, guys. You know, I would love to do a collaboration with Solid Gold Exotics. Um, Solid Gold Aquatics. She seems to know a lot about fish, so I'm definitely going to want to uh, pick her brain before I put any fish in this pond just to make sure I'm doing the right thing and creating an ecosystem. No. Well, what I was thinking is a few cichlids. Uh, I've got an endless supply of guppies in all the ponds here, and there's a lot of little nooks and crannies where the guppies can hide, which will be important. Um, yeah, Donna K. Morgan said, I've been watching great work, Greg, and the team there. Cool. Um, they love, so Jaime said he loves how you think. Uh, you should get a Japanese koi. They are very colorful. I love koi. I had koi when I lived in Las Vegas, and I had a bunch of koi. I had about a 30 by 25 foot pond in Las Vegas with two waterfalls. Believe me, if I could have moved those fish with me, which is possible, uh, I would have. Unfortunately, um, I didn't do that. I had to leave that pond. But koi, you know, I don't know. I don't want to get too crazy because, you know, the pond is a good size, but it's not huge. I don't want to overload it with larger fish. Koi get big. And I just, the same way I like to keep my reptiles, I wouldn't want to keep a fish clunking, a four foot long koi clunking along the sides of the pond, you know? So I'm going to stay with different fish, the, the smaller fish. But, um, I'm excited. I mean, I hope you guys are stoked. Too. Now, what about Slinky's Pond? Anything else going to go in there? Not at the moment, but you know me. There's going to be something in there. Um, maybe another Fly River Turtle. I'll pull one of the Fly Rivers out of the depth We're pond. too far away. Too far away. Let's walk back. Are we back live? Yeah, we're good. No, just someone said it started getting a little breaky. Okay, it's so. starting to get broken up. So we're back. We're back. Um, yeah, I'll do something with Slinky's Pond. Uh, but for now, let Slinky enjoy himself uh, in the pond by himself. Um, I sprayed and cleaned that pond out as well, uh, so that place, I, I want to look into filters. Since I have this uh, new relationship with um, Aquascapes, I would certainly like to um, get some of their canister filters. They have large pond filters, and we're going to hook it up to the, um, you know, to the uh, Slinky's Pond just to keep from having to drain so often. Look at this, isn't this sick? Can you guys imagine now if we get some like terrestrial turtles like the Chinese box turtle? They love, they can swim fine, but they also love, look, there he is, guys, he came up again. Oh, it's so cool, man. He came right up and he's investigating his habitat. Give it a second, he'll pop up again. Let's back down focus right on here. He's right yeah. in front of here. Is he? He was. This is gonna clear up even more, um, but it's the, the the substrate we put in is extremely uh, silky. Here he is. There he is. Look at this, guys. He's investigating his yeah. habitat. And this is what they do when they're brand new in some place. He's like, ah, oh, check it out. It's deep. I'm in here. You know, it's going to be so much fun to watch him really uh, come alive in this habitat. And guys, imagine you're the mailman coming up here to deliver mail. How bizarre is this going to be, huh? Are birds a problem? Uh, you know, we'll get herrings and things like that. Yeah, sure, but not for the fly river turtle and not for the Chinese boxies. They're going to be bigger, so they're going to wander this whole area. Um, it's really cool, man. They're going to, uh, as I was saying before, imagine when you come out and you see them soaking in this beautiful uh, little stream, I guess, little lagoon. 
Uh, they'll be everywhere. And, you know, they're very good climbers. They can right themselves if they flip over very easily. So I'm happy to have them just exploring this entire area. Someone asked, can fly rivers ever come out? Will they ever get you out? You know, the females will come out, or some will come out if they're getting bullied by the others. They'll, they'll flop around and try to get to another pond. But usually they stay in the water. That is their fully aquatic turtle. The females come out to lay eggs. How do you keep predators from reaching it? From reaching the fly yeah. river? Well, luckily the fly river is large enough that there's no predator that gets on my property. Uh, raccoons don't get on, foxes don't get on. Um, also, uh, bobcats don't come on this property. It's well protected with three very powerful electric uh, wires. Uh, so there's no way an animal can go over it. The fence along all two and a half acres is sunk into the ground as well. Nothing digs under it. And the only thing I'd have to worry about are herons, but they don't mess with the Fly River. The Fly River uh, is perfectly fine and too big for a heron to eat or hurt. A lot of people want to know what Kate thinks, but Kate took off. Kate! Kate's, Kate's not here at the moment. Kate! How much do Fly River turtles cost? Fly River turtles, if you're going to buy a captive Fly River turtle, which is almost impossible, uh, a baby, Kyle has a baby, and they're about $3,500 babies. Okay? Wow. A uh, turtle that big is... is about six thousand dollars i was very fortunate in order to get those turtles from uh, my involvement with the bronx zoo san diego zoo and the turtle survival alliance kate there, what, there was a question for you everyone there. wants to know what you think of it yeah yeah it's really nice she's gonna come out here with a guitar yeah and be inspired it's very peaceful yeah <laughs> And you have a project to work on, and you love projects. I love so. projects. I drive Kate I'm crazy. I'm happy for Ken. I drive Kate <laughs> crazy because I'm always doing something. And, you know, she wants me to be home for dinner uh, at a certain hour, but I'm, I can't come in. I just, I, I'm, I'm... You make I, me sound like I'm such a slave driver. No, you're not a slave driver. <laughs> you just want me to come home and eat your good cooking. That's all. Come well, on. Yeah, you, you're on a time schedule. Yeah. So, uh, so it's it's nice to be loved. Time. It's nice to be loved. She actually wants me around. A few people are asking, how many ponds do you have? People, well, some people right. know. So this is the only ornamental pond I have, or, or garden pond. But I do have the big pond, uh, the main pond. I have the uh, Asian Batiger pond I dug out, and that Slinky pond. Uh, and that's it. So maybe four if that's like really a pond. But the cool thing is, is if you guys went back and watched the open yard for nature and animal lovers, um, that build was done by a family friend, uh, Luke Cray, and his business is Emil Cray and Son. They're actually here in Florida. They've been here all week. They've been surfing and hanging out there, a lot of fun. Uh, they were here for the build and watched the Aquascapes guys, and everyone got along. And there was a really cool, um, you know, appreciation for each other's work. Uh, so Luke um, may be down here a lot this winter. That's all I'm going to say. We've got a lot going on, and one of the projects, one of the dreams I've had in addition, in addition to the dream of always having a pond in my front yard, um, I want to clean up through natural means that Luke is able to do my main large giant pond. And Luke thinks that he can get that pond completely clear to where I can snorkel in my giant pond. If I can do that, guys, you're about to get the craziest underwater footage of turtles you've ever seen in your life. That's the big, to do our own swimming with right here. Not only that, though, let's just say Kyle's got plans also. We were just at his house with my buddy Luke. And fingers crossed, hopefully those guys will come together and things will just be berserk. So there's going to be a lot of fun water features with nice. reptiles in mind. All right, so you guys are going to be privy to everything. You're going to see how we do it, how we build it, how we develop it. So I'm really pumped to do this. And I'm excited because I'm going to learn. Because, guys, to be honest, this is something I'd love to do. Uh, there's even something you can get involved in with uh, Aquascapes. They have Pond School. We're going to go in August to Pondemonium, uh, where Greg and all the pond Aquascape builders, they come together in Illinois and they just build ponds. They have what's like a pond off. Uh, they have teams and they build all these different ponds and 
they give like best pond or you know best design. It's really neat. So we're gonna go and do a whole story on aquascapes. I'm so excited. Big question people are asking, and obviously this varies depending on if you do it yourself yep. or not. But what does something like this cost? Okay, so check this out. They did give me um, an itemized list of what this pond would have cost had I paid for it. I did not pay anything except for the river rock. Um, I'm very fortunate. My money is going right now to a uh, medical procedure I'm having tomorrow. So I was strapped. So Kyle hooked me up with the rock. If I were to buy the rock, the rock alone is like probably three grand for the rock. But for the pond, the build, the humps, the liner, everything else, it came to just about $15,000. All right, this is a big, this is big. They have other sizes, guys. Check out their website. This is big, okay? Plus, you're talking about labor. Um, their labor is, is factored into that. But you could probably do a pond like this. If you take your time, you build it up right, you could probably do a pond like this for about five, six thousand dollars if you do it yourself. Perhaps even less if you're thrifty like me. Guys, everything I do is done with saving money in mind. Borrowing from the rocks. What have I told you guys? Make friends with construction folks, okay? Go to construction sites, volunteer. If you're a young guy, go find out who the job for and say, hey, I wanna work and clean up and I'll do it for some scrap materials that you might have lying around. This is how I'm trying to teach you guys to get your foot in the door. I couldn't, I couldn't have built this at this moment in my life right now. I just couldn't have done it. But I go out to all these different events, like the TTPG, which is where I met Greg. We hit it off. I built that. We're building up Camp Pennant. I'm sharing him with you. He felt there's value in that because he wants people to go to his blog channel. And I think you guys should, if you enjoy uh, ponds, email Greg. Get involved in pandemonium. Um, you know, th these are what you got to do. Sometimes you guys got to just make friends or volunteer or not get paid for a long time to make connections, to learn how to do things. Because the most valuable thing, guys, is knowledge. For me being here, seeing how it was done, I feel confident I can build something like this. And I'm going to do the stream on the other side. And I'm going to have some tutelage from Greg and from my friend uh, Luke. And like I said, this is something I've always been passionate about. There's a fly river turtle. Look, guys. There he is. See him over there? So rad. And I love it. He's, he's exploring the shoreline, uh, getting a sense of what's going on. And uh, I, I'm, this is awesome, man. But again, back to what I was saying. Like, don't let money stop you, man. This is not about money, okay? You, you know, being thrifty, maybe seeing some rocks on the side of the road. Hey, Dad, stop. Collect it. The fun is the fun is like seeing things in nature that maybe you can take, you know, obviously don't take from public lands and don't take from private lands without asking the landowners. But sometimes people have things laying in there, you know, they may see rock like this and they, it's an eyesore to them. But to us reptile and animal lovers, it's something of value. So we can go back, have dad come back with the pickup, have mom come back with the station wagon if they still make those, the minivan, whatever. Just throw the rock in the back, and, and you're going to save it for another day, man. Look at things differently. Save your money, and you can do these things. And, you know, be nice to people. Learn to communicate. Yeah. Last question. Are uh, fly rivers endangered? Yes, fly rivers are endangered. Um, in Papua New Guinea, they're endangered. Less so in uh, Australia, part of their range. Uh, they're fished for their food, habitat loss. Um, you know, they are CITES too, I believe. Uh, she's going, oh, he's going back over under the log. So sick. Uh, this is so amazing, so graceful. Look at that. I don't know if you guys can really see the shadow. Uh, he's blending in right now. But but um, don't worry. This is just a live video. There's going to be plenty more video of the Fly River Turtle. Uh, and I'll come out here and do more lives around here. We'll hang out by the... I'm going to get to work, guys. I'm going to get that fence up. I'm going to get those Chinese box turtles in here. I pumped. All right. So there you go. Uh, I guess that's going to do it for our live show today, guys. We got a lot of questions answered. Time for some pizza. Um, but don't forget, we want to see the Camp Kennan Army channel, folks. Go on over there and subscribe to Camp Kennan Army. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel here if you don't already. And uh, show us your videos. I want to see what you're creating, guys. I'm going to 
this is a big dream come true for me. I want to see your dreams. I want to know what they're all about. I want to see how well you take care of these animals. That is the mission, right? Thank you very much, guys. I really appreciate it. I'm super stoked. More pictures to come, more video, more adventures. We'll talk real soon. Say goodbye to Tom, too. He's got to get on a plane. Bye. Say goodbye to kids. Bye. Oh. So, come on. Oh, my gosh. Bye. Bye. Leo, Leo's, Leo's on the phone. We'll, we'll talk to you guys later. <laughs> so long. He's really cruising.